Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to service. It's great to be gathered with you in Christ's name. Let's give give thanks for those who are here, those who are joining us online as well. Still working on a few things of actually having our live stream. There was a couple issues that happened right before I went on vacation that I'm trying to fine tune uh, to be able to get going, but we will be posting uh, the service following uh, the service. So it won't be live streamed, it will be actually posted for those who are wanting to join us. So. Um, we give thanks as we gather. Thanks to Kathy for uh, filling in for Diane DeWitt. Uh, she's gone out to be with family. She went out to celebrate an 89th uh, birthday party for her dad uh, back in Indiana. And uh, one of the nights that they were there, um, her dad had a little fall. And so he's uh, in um, a rehab trying to get strengthened up. Um, didn't need surgery, but continued prayer. So Don's Stopper is his name, so he'll be added into our prayers of people. So, uh, just coming up uh, on the 31st to the August 1st, uh, August 3rd, uh, we're going to be having our vacation Bible school. So, if you have anybody who might be interested in joining us for that, uh, we're going to be gathering on the night from 6 to 8, um, from ages 4 and up uh, to through 5th grade. So, we give thanks for those who are joining. And those who continue to plan and prepare for that as we go forward. Um, just keep everybody in mind and share the word for, for the kids to be able to come and share in that time. So as we uh, invite you now, please to stand, please you're able. As we begin our service with a brief order of confession, forgive us the sins, which is found on page 116. We gather this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call to ordain minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together in singing our gathering song, which is, uh, sorry, is uh, Come, You Thankful People, Come.
service with the Kyrie, which is done on page 203. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Oh, my Savior, God, to thee, how great. 
great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and takes me home, joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration, and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. First reading this morning comes from Isaiah, the 44th chapter, beginning at the 6th verse. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Here ends the first lesson. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is from 86, beginning at the 11th verse. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. Who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly 
while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Here ends the second lesson. Thanks be to God. Everybody should please stand as you're able as we sing together the gospel acclamation. another parable about the sowing of seeds where you have 
had somebody who just kind of went out and threw seeds up wherever they wanted to. But we intensely took one seed, and I don't know if you see it up on the, we kept it. You see where, where it's at? What happened to it? Huh? It grew! That pass in a week. So what we gotta do is we gotta, what do we do with plants? You got to water them. So once again, we remember tying into our baptism that one of the things that we do is we continue to be watered by God's word. That God continues to remind us that we need water. We need his word or else something happens to us. What happens to us if we don't get that word? If we don't get water, what does a plant do? It kind of it, it shrivels up a little bit. And once it gets a little water, sometimes there's that refreshing. So one of the things we trust with God's work and promises that what he has done in calling us children of God, is that something that we have to worry about not having enough of? That that will change his mind. No. We trust in God's word that he has called us his little daughters and sons in baptism. And that is exactly who we are. But we still, at times, need to have some moisture come to us. This word that reminds us of the work that he has done. Because, you know what? I'm, I'm sometimes not very patient. Are you patient? <laughs> Sometimes we sit there and we go, okay, how much longer, God, before we can fully see this? How much longer before we actually can see God face to face and we know that we're sons and daughters? It's right now. But we are so impatient that we sit there and we go, okay, God, let's get a move on. And so sometimes... We get a little anxious, and we start doing things ahead of time, and we want to make sure that we're busy while we're trying to be patient. Does that work very good? Being really busy when we're trying to be patient, or they kind of distract us a little bit. It distracts us a little bit, because we want to do, and we want to, you know, as we're waiting for something to happen, we want it to kind of be happening in our time and our place. Within our gospel week, or the second reading especially, we hear that hope, uh, our understanding of hope is something that we don't have right in front of. In fact, to say if it's right in front of us, it's not really hope. But we do is we hope in God's word that he's called us to be his children, and he promises to be our father. And he promises that we will be gathered together. And we got some pictures. I don't know if you see that the, the window that's right over in the corner there. It's got like wheat that's gathered together. And a little sign and a little rake. That actually is tied into our readings of actually this understanding of God's gathering together the grain and promising to bring us together. And there's a lot of images that we see and reminded of. But we are to be those who wait with patience as we continue to hear this. And as we wait with patience, we trust that God's word comes like that water to us. That's why we gather together on Sundays. That's why we gather together with each other outside and continue to share about God's word. That's why we're going to be gathering together for Vacation Bible School. is so that we continue to hear of God's work that he started. And that he is bringing into completion. That we hope and trust and believe in that. Even as we're being patient. And trusting in him above anything else. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you continue to water us with your word. The promises that you've given us. To tell us them again. So that our hearts might be renewed. That we can continue to believe and trust that you have called us your children. And that is who we are. And with those that confidence, we can call out to you, Father. We continue to call out to you, take care of us and watch over us and bring these promises to us. Be with these, your little children, as we continue to be patient, as we continue to trust in you, and as we continue to share God's word, which is that water for others to hear. May you continue to strengthen us for this. In Jesus' name.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. More parables. This is a time of parables as we hear Jesus talking, and for the crowds, they're probably going, oh boy, another one? Well, we didn't even really figure out what the other one was. And even as the disciples continue to have Jesus explain them to, they're still sitting there at times scratching their head. Because these parables, for the most part, that Jesus talks about are kingdom of heaven parables. Things that will be and are going to continue to be present as Christ's kingdom continues to break into our world. And it's very confusing because the images and the parables that Jesus uses within this are hard for us to wrap our minds around. As we continue to think really hard about who we are, which one of the people in the parable are we? Are we the weeds? Are we the weeds? Are we the slaves? Are we those who continue to reap? We try to figure out how we fit into this. And then we forget about what the parable is talking about. In fact, after Jesus uh, has taken the time to come back out of that boat, because remember last week, he was in the boat. He had actually moved away from the shore because there were so many people coming out to hear what he had to say because they were hungry and they were thirsty to hear these words that actually knew them because they didn't have it all together, but they were needing life. They were continuing to be there. And so Jesus went into a boat and pushed out a little bit away from the shore and continued to talk to them in parables. Well, the, the disciples came to Jesus last week after he had just did one parable and said, Okay, the people are really struggling with this. Why don't you tell us what that means and we'll be able to share that with them so that they are able to do this. Because really, the disciples are still struggling with this kingdom of God parable. This way that Jesus is talking to them because it doesn't make sense. Last week, they prodigal sower who went and just scattered seed wherever he wanted to. He didn't care what took him, what didn't take. He just continued to throw things out. And then this week, we have a flipping of that as we continue to understand that we begin this parable with the understanding that the one who went and sowed, sowed with what? Good seed. Good seed. We know that from the very beginning that it was good seeds that the sower went out and sowed with. Good seed. Where did the disciples start with? When Jesus had brought them or came back into the house and they're sitting gathered around, the disciples were sitting there and they said to us, explain to us the parable of the Weeds. Tell us about the parable of the weeds of the field. See, we are much like those disciples because we get caught up in the weeds. In fact, in the parable itself, after the sower had gone out and sowed his good seed into the soil, and after the one who came after him and spread those weed seeds came in, the very first question that the slaves ask is, Come on, Master. Did you not sow good seed in your soil in the field? Where did all these weeds come from? Growing up as a farm kid, I know that it's one thing that uh, farmers don't like weeds in their crop. It's one of those things when you look out at those fields, you want them to actually look nice. You want to get rid of the weeds. You want to make sure that by having no weeds, it gives more opportunity for you to yield more products, to get more grain out of this. So, you know what, Master? Do you want us to go out and pull out all those weeds? Because we'll do that. We'll go out and we'll pull out all those weeds because we have a problem with a world, 
and we have a problem with the field that is filled with weeds amidst the weeds. We are the ones who are driven to move, and we don't fully understand because we are impatient. We see something out there, and we want to do something about it because, you know what, if the master isn't going to do it, maybe it'd be better if we did. How about we go out and we start pulling up the weeds? That would be a great job because we want the yield to increase. We want it to look better. We want to make sure that that wheat is not corrupted by the weeds that are growing alongside of it. And the master says, no. No. Oh, what a foolish farmer this parable is talking about. A farmer who just lets weeds grow along with wheat? <sighs> what is he thinking? See, we have a problem with seeing things around us. We are very understandable that the things of this world are filled with a lot of sin and selfishness. There's a lot of evil that is out there. And we start naming things and we start trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, this last week, it, it was totally a random thing that I came across. I was on Facebook and I was talking about this uh, concert, this, this Travis Scott, who is this rapper, was going to have over in Egypt. And of course, I don't read the articles a lot. Sometimes I just kind of go into the comments. Have you ever done that before? <laughs> Gone into the comments and just seen what people are talking about and how they're kind of feeling it. And sometimes it's way off base and sometimes it's to the point. But I happened to just click on this random posting on this random concert and the possibility of it happening. And I came across something that we struggle with. We really struggle with. And the person who was commenting on this said this because they were tying into this concert of being something that's evil and that's something that shouldn't be done because of the death that happened and all those things. And one of the, comment, the people commenting on it said, the Satan that you made up this entity you all blame for bad things that happen. It's funny that all of you believe in a God that has all this power and is so strong. But yet, this Satan runs rampant. Something doesn't quite add up. That gets it. In the midst of a world that is struggling and trying to figure out why bad things happen, in this world and why this is continuing to go on why the person allowed the the sower allowed for this person to sneak in and bury these seeds why that's really easy to make that comment if you think of something that we just make up but we don't have something that is just made up we have a god who is continuing to do one thing the goal those so good seeds. See, this farmer is very, very, very patient. Once again, coming from our children's message that sometimes we're not very patient. But God is. See, that field that is mixed with all those weeds and that weeds, it's very easy to go out and just start pulling. In fact, we are very good at just pulling. And the things often that we struggle with is the things that we would name as a weed, sometimes is wheat. And those things that we name as wheat are often weeds. And we get things all messed up. We get things messed up. Because we start judging and thinking that we need to help God in order to actually help him bring in his kingdom and do those things. This parable is not about what you are going to do in order to help get rid of all these weeds, but in what the patient God is. He takes care of the problem. Because at the end of this time, when the harvest comes, what he does is something quite amazing. 
He tells his reapers, which are the angels, to go out and bring into the kingdom those that are the wheat that are standing up. And there's a, 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 a grain that's called darnel, a weed called darnel, which is uh, one that actually looks a lot like grain. And it's over in Israel. And one of the things that's different between the darnel and the grain, the wheat, is that when the harvest time comes, the wheat's head will bend because of the weight. And the darnel will stand straight up. And that's one of the differences. So the angels going in are able to see this. This is one of those things that we see and hear. Of God bringing in that harvest. But this is exactly how patient God is. And what he continues to do when we think that he is sitting back and doing absolutely nothing. See, it's in the midst of the brokenness that we feel within our lives. With our health. In the midst of the times that we're struggling with relationships, God continues to come and to answer in. See, Christ has come to live and to die and to be raised so that we could have life. See, what Jesus actually does is come in amongst the weeds. And he does something to us. He actually says, you who are with sin, let me have you that. Let me take that sin upon myself, that selfishness upon myself, and you will be called a child of God. The patience, the love that God has for you is to continue to remind you of the love that he has. In the midst of us being broken and sinful, he has saved and redeemed and called you his child. That watering, that tending that comes is the job of the slaves. It's the job of us as we continue to go out and share this word of what God has done in sowing good seed. And taking those things that might be weeds and having that strange power to make them Unbelievable. Unbelievable without faith to support and to call and to say that you are his. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of this day, O Christ, our hope, hymn 604. <laughs>
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confidence that God receives our joys and concerns. Let us offer our prayers for the church, for those in need, and for all of creation. O oh God, you call your church to announce the gospel of reconciliation and truth both near and far. Guide your church as it seeks your wisdom and shares it, trusting your spirit bearing witness among us. Lord, in your mercy. You bring forth all creation and call it good. Direct policies to protect lands and seas bring rain the sun parched fields and protect areas impacted by natural disasters. We still continue to reach out to you for the rain that is needed, but also for our neighbors in Canada who are continuing to have fires. May you continue to be with the farmers and ranchers and all who are affected and continue to bring your care. Lord, in your mercy. You desire peace among nations and peoples. Guard our neighborhoods from hatred. Watch over police officers and firefighters. And teach us how to advocate for those who live in fear. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. You are gracious and merciful, comforting those who suffer any affliction. We especially lift up to you, Lois Ferguson, Don Stauffer, Lynn Denzer, Eric Hansen, uh, Rick Hansen, Irene Oldberg, Darlene Hombert, Kathy Knowski, Kurt Peterson, Lori Helling, Peggy Zavoda, Hillary Birdsell, Doris Henderson, Judy Lemmer, Lynn Kamika, Berlin Tyne, Lisa Krochak, Cindy Grzynski, Bonnie Young, Dennis Krokheimer, Joe Myers, Joyce Denser, or Joyce Denser, Pam Krieger, Eric Einstrom, Zeke Draka, George Collins, Sandy Bauer, Matthew Mullen, Harvey Chapman, Preston Paulington, Aubrey Wilbur, Cindy Lighthizer, Gene Wong, Milo Kavinsky, Lloyd Savoda, Evan Dee, Harry Knish, Ken Meyer, Diane Levine Schultz, Tom Trenda, Amy Corpus, Yvonne Corpus, and Joy Corpus. Be with our men and women who serve our country, especially those from our congregation. Be with Noel Bachman, Brett Byrne, Travis Ferguson, Cassie Gilbertson, Ashley Loisky, Michael Schaff, Alex Schaff, Brandon Van Hout, and Sam Westerhouse. Be with them and their families as they serve. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. You name each of us as your children. Guide our hospitality ministry to welcome all, our education ministry to equip us for faithful living, and our social ministry to enact the gospel in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you those who rest in you, those who were saints and witnesses amongst us, that we continue to hear and learn from that continue to bear witness to your love and grace. May we be held together with them in the company of all the saints with the promise of what is yet to come. Christ and all the people, the saints being gathered together around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we lift up these prayers to you, knowing and trusting that you hear each and every one of them. Continue to be with us when we can't get the words out. And know and trust that we have a good and loving Father who continues to care for us, provide for us, and watch over us. To keep us 
us from evil and continue to hear our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now receive an offering for the care and concern of the ministries of this congregation, for this community which we're a part of, the world to which we've been sent by.
given to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new testament, my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and may we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Here, trust and believe that this promise is indeed for you. This gift is open to all Christians who believe in the promise of it to come and receive.
invite you to please stand as you're able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his favor upon you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together in singing our ascending song, which is for the fruit of all creation in 679. 